three meter galvanized steel posts. There we go. Perfectly aligned. This thing is amazing. And guys, welcome back to the off-grid garage here in sunny. It's a beautiful day today, beautiful. Look at the cloud situation. Perfect for me. Gives me enough reflection, diffuses the light onto all of the panels here. And I had 100 amps outside today. Yeah. <laughs> 100 amps in the middle of winter, but now it's a bit less. It's only six amps outside. Oh, that's not good. So today we are going to put all the tracks for the walls in here at the ceiling and also at the bottom. So we've got a good understanding how big this room will be. Yeah, and you may have read the comments under the last video. So I'm not building another crane here, another lifter for batteries or something. This would be not ideal. It would be a stationary crane to pull batteries back and forward only. I much rather have this mobile battery lifter you have seen in previous videos. That is far more versatile. I can just drive in, grab a battery and put this somewhere else. A stationary crane wouldn't be the same. But I also like the idea of having here a swing chair, like a Hollywood swing, you know, like we had in the 70s. That would be actually ideal here. And I could just sit there and swing back and forward, watching my batteries charging and calibrating as bad. Such a good and wonderful idea, but it was not correct. And I tell you, this laser is so good. Once it's pointing in the right direction, you, you just have to line up your track with a green laser and it's perfectly straight. <laughs> so much easier. I know, right? I'm a bit late to the laser level party. I wanted one for a long time, but never really did it. But now it comes in very handy with building up all these tracks and walls and... Okay, let's keep uh, cracking. So finding the position of the bottom track is very easy now with the laser. So I'll just take a pencil and put a line in this position. And then we have the exact alignment from the top rail all the way down to the bottom. Straight. That <laughs> it is so easy, it's unbelievable. So, and uh, now I have to make the decision where the door will be. I want to have it in this location here because this is my workbench here. And then we can just go in and out of the room, back to the workbench, back in the room, back to the workbench. So the door on this side here will be ideal. Um, as per regulations, I have to be 600 away from the battery. So this is my line here. This is 650. This is where the door starts, but I don't know where it ends. I've, um, I've got the door already here, but I don't know. I don't know the dimensions, including the door frame. That should be, should be very easy. The door is, um, 820 millimeters. And the frame is 19 millimeters, what it says here, there, 19 millimeters. Times two makes 38 millimeters, thank you. Plus 820 makes 850 something, what it says here. Plus maybe another couple of millimeters or so. So this is 858 millimeters, so I'm going for 860 millimeters. Is that correct? I haven't used a calculator. So that's how it will be. This will be our door. Seems perfect. That is actually a very big room. I am impressed. All right, unfortunately um, for this situation and, and this situation and for this situation and also this situation, we need to come up with an individual custom made solution. I cannot, I cannot use this track and rail system because it's far too wide. So we have to make our own for these three locations. So even this seems very easy and straightforward. There will be far more customization for this room because of these um, special locations where the wall will be a lot thinner than for the rest of the walls. Well, we have always customized stuff here in the off-grid garage, right? So there's no exception to this battery room. Okay, and exactly here, this will be the end 
the outside corner of our room. All right, next step, drilling. It'll be noisy. And I'm also going to put this PE damp barrier underneath. And it goes under the tracks, just so it doesn't get any moisture from the concrete here and starts rusting or so. It's probably a bit over the top, but... Oh, wow. It is made in Australia. I wasn't aware that they are making anything here. It's like this thin plastic material. All right, first bottom track in place of Bombenfest. <laughs> so the second floor track is mounted as well. I've just put on the laser again here to confirm that I'm straight. I'm not 100% straight actually. The line is here inside, while here it is exactly on the corner of this, of this track. I think this one millimeter is fine. Next step would be to put our wall studs in. They're coming in three meter lengths, obviously too long. So I need to measure. So I need to measure each of these wall studs because our ceiling track is not in level. This point is lower than this point over there. So I need to measure every single stud. But before I can do that, I have to make a decision what kind of plasterboard I'm going to use because two sheets of plasterboard, they need to meet on one of the wall studs. So I think I go for 2.4 meters by 1.2 meters or something. I'll have a quick look online what the uh, local hardware store has in stock. And then we make a decision in what distance we have to mount these wall studs. There you can see we are not 100% leveled at the ceiling track. So the studs will get longer the further we go this way. Not by much, but still. 2610. What did I just say? 2610. And I'm cutting them like 10 millimeters shorter. So they've got a bit of play in the ceiling track. This is just so if the ceiling swings a bit, it doesn't affect the walls. Otherwise, you get cracks in the plasterboard and all kind of shit. So now we just twist this around and move it all the way in. And you can see I cut them a bit shorter. So if the whole ceiling starts swinging, the wall stud can actually move inside the ceiling track here. So I'm not going to connect the stud and the track together here. And the plasterboard will just go over it and only be screwed to the wall studs, not to the ceiling track. Even this whole garage is a steel structure here. It still has a few millimeter of movement. Okay, this is our corner. Wow. So now here comes the big moment. <laughs> moment of truth. That is nice. And this one, oh, is the laser. Yeah, perfect. Nice. All right. <laughs> oh, I passed, I passed. Now it's so easy with the laser and you line up your, your tracks and your rails and everything will be perfect afterwards. Cool. All righty, first one in. You know, the standard plasterboard comes in 240 by 120 and 10 millimeter thick. So that means we can space the wall studs by 600, which is quite the standard. So here exactly 600 and then at 120, that's always middle of the wall stud. And um, here at the end of the track, uh, we need to do something else. I have, I have actually another two of these um, 50 by 50 galvanized steel posts I want to put in, in exactly this location here at the end of this track. So one goes over here and the other one, I don't know if I do this 600 or maybe 500 only, because I need the wall in this area here to um, be able to carry a bit more load. It's not for a battery, but you may already have a guess what it could be.
So the next wall stud will be 2620 already, so 10 millimeter longer than the first one, than the corner one. Okay, that's how it... can't hear me. So this is how it is going to look like. Two solid metal beams at the end. This will give us a sturdy wall in this area. It's probably okay to use these ones as well, but just to be on the very safe side, I go with this 50 by 50 by 2.5. There, um, there was no white fluffy stuff coming out while cutting. So hopefully it's all good. So my friends, now we have to build the door frame here. One post right, one post left, and a horizontal track above the door. Okay, let's do the vertical studs first. Because I don't know how high this door, including frame is, I'm still a bit undecided where to put this cross support. So I use some magnets first just to hold it in place. So I can stand here for another six hours and think about it. I'm also adding this piece of timber inside this rail. So this is to make this corner stud here more rigid because this stud here is carrying the whole weight of the door and this thin metal is just and I'll probably do the same on the other side as well, even there's no load on it, but it's a bit more rigid. Just feels better, right? Hmm, I'm a bit unsure how to form this corner here from the inside of the room. The outside, the outside boards have support by this stud here, but what about the inside boards? They have no support here, right? So I would need to put another stud in here and also another stud somewhere in here. So these boards on the inside can lean against it. Yeah, it's probably not the best way to build an outside corner. I should have watched the YouTube video, but now I'm two studs short. Yeah, so clear the hardware store is just around the corner. See, three meters empty. But the lady said there are 18 in stock. But there's clearly none. How can this happen? Too short. Damn it! Now it fits. So my friends, we are slowly coming to an end of the construction of the frame. Last couple of screws into this wooden stud. All right, and this was the last one all done. Okay, putting these fat steel studs back in. Okay, I'm not 100% sure where the location is for these um, studs, so I'll leave them as they are. Welcome to the battery and system room! <laughs> nice! Alright my friends, we have now finalized the framing of this battery and system room for all the drywalls to go in. We've got the door frame over there, got all the wooden studs in place. And there will be no electrical installation here inside these walls, everything will be surface mounted. And I opted in to have these studs 300 mil apart, which looks a bit excessive, but eventually we will have an air condition up here. And this gives me more flexibility where to put the inside unit. All right, my friends, so far this video from today and the last couple of days, 
building this frame structure for our drywall for the battery and system room in the off-kit garage. I'm very, very happy with the progress. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support. Thanks to all these... to 90,000 subscribers, guys. That is insane. I can't even think about it. 90,000 people have subscribed to this channel here. That is freaking amazing. Thank you so much. Unbelievable. Less than 10,000 subscribers away from the big number. <laughs> I think when we hit 100,000, I'll open a spat. At least one, right? Guys, until the next video when we do something completely different. I don't want to do all this renovation, construction work all the time here. It's boring stuff and it doesn't really belong into the channel here. So I'll try to keep these videos a bit shorter. Well, guys, some boxes have been delivered here. They need to be unboxed. And this is exactly what we are going to do in the next couple of videos. One of them will be very interesting. No, I'm not going to show you. You have to wait until then, because we need some sun and some shade as well for that to test, actually. Hmm? Yes, you will see, it will make a lot of sense. Guys, and until the next video, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. Wow, that looks amazing. That is a freaking big room. Wow.